Hi, good afternoon. I'm Mike Bowler with the Link Local Network. Link locally and connect globally. We're here at Chicagoland Signs, a full-service sign company in Addison, Illinois. Let your signs be their business. And we have a real pleasure. It's a real treat today. We have with us Harry Moser, a 40-year veteran of the manufacturing industry, as well as a president and founder of the Reshoring Initiative, which I believe helps is going to move jobs back to the U.S., isn't it, Harry? That's it. By yeah. the way, thanks Again, for coming in. Yeah, thank, thank you very much for having me here, and you know, appreciate the chance to talk to all of you out there. Uh, the Reshoring Initiative has as its mission to bring manufacturing jobs back to the United States by showing big companies what it really costs them when they offshore, so they decide to reshore to bring the work back. All right, and this is a, it's been a problem for some time. I mean, unemployment uh, currently is above 9%. Um, the loss of a number of different jobs outside of the manufacturing sector has been high, but specifically in that, hasn't it? The easiest way to measure what's happened to manufacturing is the trade deficit, which is the difference between what we import and what we export. And the, the difference right now is about $600 billion, that's with a B, billion dollars per year. And that amounts to about three million manufacturing jobs. That's a lot of jobs. It's a lot of jobs. And for every manufacturing job, you get one and a half to two other jobs. That's like people that uh, make videotapes for them, or uh, people that sue them, like lawyers, or make or <laughs> flip hamburgers for them. And, and so, you, so that means maybe there's six million of those jobs. So in total, nine million, which represents about five or six percent of total employment. And therefore, if we could balance the trade deficit by reshoring, we would reduce the unemployment rate from about 9% down to about 3 or 4%, and this would be a much happier country. How? Down to 3 or 4%. 3 or 4%. So that, what would that do to the economy? Oh, it'd be well, it would be great. The thing would be, instead of growing at maybe 1 or 1.5%, one if that, uh, GDP per year, we'd probably be growing at the, the long-term growth rate of 3% or something like that after having had that, that first surge as the work came back. Obviously, the, the work will not come back in a week or a month because right. it took 40 years or 50 years for it to go offshore. The, the, the Japanese uh, started in the, in the 60s and then the, uh, it's in some order the Mexicans and the Koreans and now the Chinese plus the Indians plus a lot of others. So, so it took 40, 50, 60 years for it to happen, and it's going to take uh, some years to bring it back. Well, geez. Now, Harry, you have been interviewed and appeared on numerous TV shows, uh, content in the newspapers, magazines, radio shows. You do, I don't know, how many presentations a year? About 100 all over the country. All over yeah. the country, United States. Do you also go to Washington and talk to some of our uh, leaders out yeah. there? Actually, I was in uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, two weeks ago today, and I met with uh, four uh, congressmen's offices, including uh, Congressman Manzulo's and Lipinski's office from, the, uh, from Illinois, and uh, also with Congressman Wolf in, in, in greatest detail there because Congressman Wolf has a bill, H.R. 516, called the Bring Jobs Back to America Act which is uh, basically the reshoring act and it includes a call for the use of software such as the software that the reshoring initiative has written and gives away to u.s companies wow well you would think that they're very receptive in washington to anything that's going to help uh, create more jobs as well, well as you know bring them back in the country as well as help out with the economy with the problems we're having right now well there's a couple, couple reasons for that first one thing they like about the Reshoring Initiative is that it doesn't cost them anything. <laughs> so, you know, we've just been through this, uh, this budget deficit crisis, and, and uh, they're, they're a, a little less willing to spend money now. And, and the Reshoring Initiative essentially doesn't ask them for money. All it asks them for is, to, is a, a little encouragement, a little um, publicity. I, I'd, I'd love to have President Obama get up in his State of the Union message and call on the big companies and, and say something like, you know how I've told you I'm going to tax you for all those jobs you've sent offshore? Right. Well, I'll give you two years, and if all of you call Harry tomorrow at 847-726-2975 or email him at harry.moser 
at Comcast.net and ask him for help to reevaluate your what you've offshored and if you'd make a serious effort to bring it back, then I won't tax you. So if I could get President Obama to make that statement on television, I'm convinced we could bring a lot of the work back. Any of the congressmen thank you for coming out there and starting this? I mean Well this is, Congressman Wolf is very appreciative because he's working the same side of the street as I am. Uh, every, uh, almost every congressman I've worked with has been very appreciative. Uh, uh, three weeks ago I was in Minnesota and I spoke on a panel that uh, Congressman Keith Ellison, a very liberal Democratic congressman, put on on called Make It in America. And you know his, and so I'm working the Democratic side, the Republican side, also working with a, a department of a, an agency within the Commerce Department. Agency is called Select USA, and their job is to convince foreign companies to invest in manufacturing in the U.S. And so they're interested because. They want to convince the companies that this is the place to manufacture to serve the U.S. market. And what I do is convince companies that this is the place to manufacture to serve the U.S. market. So they're talking about taking the software that we've written and getting it out to all the economic development agencies across the country to use for that purpose. There's not really a situation where uh, people looking for jobs are not looking at the manufacturing areas because of perhaps preconceived ideas or notions about what manufacturing used to be as opposed to how, what actually occurs now with clean rooms and how different it is? The, the manufacturing industry is dramatically different from what most people think of it. It's typically, and there's exceptions of course, but typically it's clean, it's safe, it's not, not, not especially noisy, it's well lit, it's often air conditioned, it's often as nice as, as my office, <laughs> it's a mess right now. and. Uh, and, and, and it's well paid, it, the average pay or total compensation is 20% or so higher than, than non-manufacturing. And the, one of the biggest problems actually with reshoring is that there's a shortage today of skilled manufacturing workers, of tool and die makers, precision machinists, people like that. And so some people question whether reshoring can succeed because they doubt that there will be enough people with the appropriate skills, appropriate intelligence to fill the jobs and make the work that we bring back. Well, I think everybody's interested in improving the economy across the board. What could you tell or a piece of advice you might be able to give to some of the folks that perhaps are uh, in transition or even underemployed and would have an interest in going into manufacturing? Where can they, uh, besides yourself, give more information about it? What can they do to prepare themselves so they will become skilled enough? You know, the, 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 ob the obvious place, I'd say, is to go to their, their local community college. So uh, the, the se several of the colleges here in the Chicago area uh, have appropriate programs. Uh, uh, the College of Lake County has it. Uh, there's a group downtown, actually at the high school level, called uh, um, uh, uh, the uh, Renaissance Council. Uh, I can't remember the exact name for it. But they... Uh, uh, Austin Polytech, that's it, that, that's doing a great job. Uh, so I'd say go to your community college and ask them what they have available to train you in this. There's also a national board, I'm on the board of it, called NIMS, National Institute for Metalworking Skills, that works through all these schools and provides credentials. So if you can't find any other source, go to NIMS, ask them to point out the closest community college that trains in the, in the manufacturing field. These are great jobs. Great jobs. A lot, a lot of people, uh, high school degree, uh, community college, two years, uh, five, seven years experience, making uh, 70, 80, 90 thousand dollars a year, including overtime. So working maybe 50 or 60 hours a week. But I work 50 or 60 hours a week and nobody's paying me. <laughs> well, we all, everybody, including Washington, owes you a big debt of gratitude. Uh, give us that contact information again so people can get a hold of you. So it's uh, the Reshoring Initiative, and you can find that at www.reshorenow.org. And you can reach me at harry.moser, M-O-S-E-R, at comcast.net. And it's 847-726-2975. 847-726-2975. All right. Thank you very much for being on, sir. Pleasure, Mike. Pleasure and yeah. an honor. It's Mike Buller for the Link Local Network. Link locally, connect globally.